this was obviously so different because we couldn't even really rehearse in that traditional way that I've been doing for since I was three when I started acting. <laughs> so it, it was a really cool experience. And that's why I was so excited to be in this movie, because like Chelsea said, she gave all of us such great opportunities to put ourselves into these characters and use our own imaginations and come up with our own reasons behind, you know, the subtext behind what what Georgie's saying or what someone else's character is saying. We we could really collaborate on those aspects, um, which was so exciting for me. Thank you for joining us for the Woodstock Film Festival Let's Talk Film podcast. I'm your host, Katie Mejia, and today I'm joined by writer, director, editor, and actress, Chelsea Bowe, and actress screenwriter, Ava Akers. Thanks for joining me today. Thank Thanks you. For us. We're grateful to be Hi. here. Really quickly, we'll just talk about what Woodstock Film Festival is. It is a haven for networking with high caliber industry members, voting members of the Academy, filmmakers, musicians, and fiercely independent artists. The 25th annual film festival takes place October 15th to the 20th, 2024. So be sure to submit your film. Um, the early deadlines, you know, are, are important to take note of because you can save lots of money and don't wait till the last minute. And so first we'll start with Chelsea. Chelsea Bowe is an award-winning commercial director with a background in theater, comedy, improv, and producing. She garnered years of comedy training from Second City, and the Groundlings, and graduated from Loyola Marymount University School of Film and TV. Chelsea co-founded a production company, Paxeros, with her husband producing partner, Sean Drummond, and together they have produced four feature films, including Joshua Leonard's Fully Realized Humans, Tribeca 2020, and Sarah Adina Smith's The Drop, Tribeca 2022. And of course, No Right Way is her feature de directorial debut, and that's what we'll be talking about mostly today. Ava Akers is one of Hollywood's most versatile young actors. She played Madeline in American Horror Story, Hotel, Young Queen Regina in ABC's Once Upon a Time, and recurred as, let me get this right, Young Rebecca in CW's award-winning musical comedy Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Ava's recent credits include a recurring role on Ryan Murphy's 911 on Fox, Handsome, a Netflix murder mystery, and Wet Hot American Summer 10 Years Later. Ava and Chelsea are co-stars in Chelsea's film, No Right Way. So the film screened at Woodstock Film Festival. Was it any kind of premiere situation or just had it premiered elsewhere? It was our New York premiere. Oh, fantastic. It was your New York yeah. premiere. And the logline for it is a pair of half-sisters try to make each other whole when calamity strikes. And so I'll quickly here show everybody the trailer for the film so you guys can get excited about this. How is this not meat? It's jack meat. It's slimy. You eat shit from Taco Bell. That's slimy. What the fuck is that? It's kombucha. That's so wrong. Okay. Harper, why are you here? Child Protective Services called me and said I needed to come pick you up. Why? You've been living without power, Georgie? Like, that's kind of a big but deal. The quicker you actually get through this checklist, the quicker your kids come back to you. How long should I pack for? Yeah. Oh, a couple days. Um, yeah. Georgie, seven? pack for about a month. What? Dad, they said that she was going to go to foster care if we didn't do something. Harper, you don't want to get dragged into this. Just go home. I'm not just leaving her here. I hope you know that I'm here for you if you want to talk or... Is this like a therapy picnic? Let's do something fun. Okay. I have to say, it's been really nice to have Georgie in LA. For the first time, Georgie and I are really getting to bond. Mm, you're literally the lamest. Ew! We gotta do something, Dad. Like, she actually needs us for the first time, so I think that we should go after custody. You can come in here and be a weekend, Mom, but this isn't just instant mother, just add water. You know, you gotta show up every single day, whether you feel like it or not. Custody papers? Wait, what? You fucking bitch! I fucking hate you! My children were just taken away from me by you. That was your decision to put them in that house with that man. So how the hell are you supposed to protect them? You don't have kids. You have no fucking idea what it's like to be a single fucking mother. You have no clue. I 
swear on my life, I will always be honest with you from here on out. Well, if we're being honest now, you better hide your keys from me, because I'm going to steal your car and I'm going to run away from you. Thanks for the heads up. So I just wanted to ask what you guys, you know, what your experience was at Woodstock this year, being that you guys are Californians and you guys came up to Woodstock, New York. You want to start, Chelsea? Gosh, I have nothing but amazing things to say about the Woodstock Film Festival. It was so magical and all the people we met. And I just felt like it was so supportive of their artists. And Woodstock does a great job of like taking care of all the filmmakers and giving them opportunities to network. And it was just, you know, the quality of films was incredible. I was just really, really blown away by the whole thing. That's great. That's great to hear. What about you, Ava, like, as an actor? Because there weren't a whole, we usually have a lot more actors, but the strikes and whatnot. So what was it like for you? Yeah, I was glad that I could go. We had the SAG um, interim, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, we had the SAG interim um, agreement situation so I could attend and talk about the movie. So I was grateful for that. Um, and yeah, I mean, like everything Chelsea said, nothing but good things about Woodstock. And it was just beautiful. I mean, I grew up in Los Angeles, so I am used to not seeing that many trees. <laughs> and I was there and I think the whole time I just kept saying, that's so pretty. Oh my God, that's so pretty. That's like everywhere I go. Um, and yeah, the people, the films, it was so inspirational. The energy was just passion and support all around. So it was really great, very fulfilling trip for sure. And you guys won an award, right? So tell us what the award was that you won. <laughs> <laughs> we won the Ultra Indie Award, right. which is really exciting. Um, and Ava and Sean were there to accept it, which was awesome. I had a runoff to another festival because our film was screening. But I, yeah, I think I left. <laughs> oh, Sean, Sean's handing it to me. Right. And at first I was like, is he the actor in the movie? And then we realized later, I was like, oh, you must have had to step away. And it was, you were in the shots. I was so confused. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. So where was the other film playing? I mean, the film was playing at another. At, um, the Richmond, Virginia Film Festival. Richmond, yeah, cool. And you guys yeah. won a lot of other awards elsewhere too, right? We have. We've been really lucky. I think it's like the eight film festival or our film screened at like seven festivals so far and I think we've taken home eight awards or something like that so just feeling very loved that's yeah. wild did you expect any of this I mean have you, this is your first feature film so did you have any idea what you were doing I mean you obviously have a lot of experience doing <laughs> yeah doing films, I, but um I'm so grateful that the film is resonating with people it just feels you know it feels worth it because making a movie is so hard <laughs> and it's like a miracle that like anything you know ends up in you know to screen um so the fact that not only like are we winning award I think I'm just surprised like the awards are really awesome but I think the personal connection that I'm creating with people after the film who like come up to me afterwards and say how it impacted them on a personal level just mm -hmm. has I didn't like I knew that's why I was doing it, but then for, to, for it to actually happen is like a different thing. It's like, it just means a lot. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. Like I learned so much working with Joshua Leonard on Fully Realized Humans. Um, that was also an improvised movie and I edited that with him. And so just through that process, I think it really gave me like a boot camp for making my own movie. Um, and same thing, like producing Sarah Dina Smith's The Drop, you know, I learned a lot from that experience. So um, and then even just making commercials, like, you know, every commercial I make, no matter the length, it, you know, is a learning lesson. So those experiences just prepared me for, you know, when things go awry and you have to problem solve and make compromises and, you know, the storytelling element of editing, um, I felt like gave me a really strong toolkit to use while making this movie. And I think it kind of, in that way, it like set me up for greatness. 
Are there improvised, like scripted films and filmmakers that you studied or anything, or did that just happen? How did the improvisation part? Because like I'm a huge Richard Linklater fan, and like improv, I personally love improvised scripts, and I love the fact that directors can just say, you know what, I wrote this little line here. You just put whatever you think is in there, and let's see what happens. Like, who, did you study anybody, or is there anybody in particular that you really like? You know, their style that gave you inspiration. Yeah, I mean. Um... I grew up doing comedy improv, like you mentioned. So improv was always something that like my lit up my heart. Um, and then I think the first time I like saw, you know, you know, Judd, in the Judd Apatow films, they like let the actors riff and do some improv. And I think that was, I was always inspired by that. And then obviously the Duplasses do a lot of that as well. And, you know, when Josh, my friend, uh, Ross and Jen, who I met at a festival introduced me to Josh and, you know, they were like, this is an improvised film. Like, are you interested in producing it? And I didn't know I was going to be editing it at the time. Um, so I got the, that original like outline and was just so excited. Like I was like, this is hilarious. And these actors have already done this improv thing. So I can learn a lot from them. Um, and I really did. And they were both on camera. So I was behind camera and I was kind of the one like I was kind of the only one behind camera who like had my eyes on the script and was like, remember this beat, guys. Or, you know, so I was like there to help. And I just learned so much through that experience. That was really like my boot camp. But, yeah, I'm super inspired by Richard Linklater as well. Like everything I watch of his, my heart just melts like <laughs> so I think. A huge, another aspect is, you know, I'm all about collaboration. And I feel like when you hire the right talent, um, I want to empower them and let them like they want to dive into their character and let their character have a voice. And like, I'm all about that as long as we're staying in the construct of, you know, the arc of each scene and the arc of the story. Um, but yeah, it's like that. I want to give that freedom to the talent to play and find their voice and say what they feel like their character needs to say. Um, and then it just makes it feel so, you know, real and they're forced to listen, which I think is huge. Um, yeah. And, and I think it just makes it, it makes the performances and the feeling of the movie just feel all the more, um real like, too but also real i mean i think that that's that quality i mean and ava did you improvise lines and like how did you approach it and have you done that before or previously um yes uh first of all yes we did improvise um i think it was i mean i was trying to think of like a percentage of how much was improvised versus of the words we said but that was too much i can't i can't equate that right now but um Yes, a lot of it, every scene was improvised. Um, we had, I mean, Chelsea wrote the script outline. So I had a basis of, you know, this is the point of the scene. This is, um, you know, there were some like written sentences, written lines to that we needed to remember to say, um, to really emphasize these perspectives or points of the scene. And each scene was, you know, crafted out to have a, beginning, middle, arc, and end. So we would, Chelsea and I would just talk about the scene before we filmed. Um, and it was interesting because I'm so used to preparing and rehearsing. And I like to be, you know, not um, always like planned out because I like when it happens organically, but in terms of a scene, I like to over prepare. I like to know all my lines and all of their lines so that I can throw it away when I get to, you know, in front of the camera, because I figure in, in my head, it's like, if I know it backwards and forwards, then when I get there, I don't have to think about it. But this was obviously so different because we couldn't even really rehearse in that traditional way that I've been doing for since I was three when I started acting. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was a really cool experience. And that's why I was so excited to be in this movie, because like Chelsea said, she gave all of us such great opportunities to put ourselves into these characters and use our own imaginations and come up with our own 
reasons behind, you know, the subtext behind what what Georgie's saying or what someone else's character is saying. We we could really collaborate on those aspects, um, which was so exciting for me. But yeah, I really had to let go of everything that I learned and just kind of go headfirst into this whole other way of doing things, which was so cool. I mean, that I was, yeah, even just thinking about it, I, I was just so excited the whole time. Yeah, I mean, you're basically a child actor, so you must have been like really learning things so differently than maybe an actor who start later too. Um, you said you were on an episode of Weeds in your bio, though. I have to ask about that because I've that was like my one of my all time favorite shows. Oh, were you who? What? What did you say you were? You were. Oh, goodness, you probably I don't even remember. You were. You were. I think four. I was. Like, no. I was maybe six, seven. Yeah. Wow. Something. Um. Yeah, and I genuinely. Six I, or seven. <laughs> that's wild. All I remember from because I haven't actually I haven't watched Weeds, which is bad because it's That's interesting. It is really good. I mean, so it's good, Ava. really I good. I mean, it was like one of the all time best shows. I was, on it. I was so little, like of course I wouldn't watch. Weeds. No, and it's not appropriate. I mean, it's completely inappropriate. And there were kids on that show, like a lot of kids. There was a bunch. Of, I mean, I remember all the young kids on the show, and of course, as as a, as a person, it's like, wow, this is kind of inappropriate for the, you know, to be on the show, but. Yeah, so but I I never I you never, weren't allowed to watch it, so you like never even seen it. So yeah, it that's out. wild. Um, but yeah, that was a really cool set. It was we were on a sound stage, um, which I always love going on to sound stages because it's so <laughs> it's like when you're in the set of the house or the room, whatever you. I forget where I am because I just convince myself like, yeah, this is my house. This is, you know, an office building, whatever it is. But then like the second you step out, you're like, oh, I'm in like this giant box with no windows and it's could be nighttime outside and I have no clue. It's because bizarre. It's like it's 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 like, do you really have to convince yourself like you really have to say to this is real because you're not even in a real place. I mean, it's one thing when you're actually in a real you're, you guys everything obviously you shot with no right way was 100 percent real a lot of in the car you know and you're just out there um and you're you feel you're there in the space so you know that you're there but if you're in a box that's like that's very strange to me i, I always thought that was weird how it must be difficult for act, actors to really get into something if it's in a fake setting but yeah you know, it's it interesting is, it is interesting i've also done work on like green screen sets um, which is cool. And I've done motion capture before. And um, like when I'm for played, animated films, you've done voiceovers for animated films yes. or voice acting. Yeah. Yeah. What is that like? Well, that's got to be really tricky because I mean, the majority of things, especially for kids nowadays, that's appropriate for you and your age or at least back when you were. It's like the the an animated films, you know, a lot of them are really well done now and there's just oh, so yeah. many they crank out. So you must get a lot of work doing that no? I yeah. Thankfully, it's been very. um yeah, I've been doing it for a long time and I do ADR or things for, you know, Adventure Time. I've done Family Guy episodes. Um, so it's just, yeah, I mean, I just have, it's my favorite thing to do in the entire world. So I feel really lucky to have a, it's like my job. So I feel lucky that it's my job and my favorite thing is in one. So <laughs> that's great. pretty amazing. Yeah, it's very special. You are, you are totally blessed. In your, it was your family and film. Like, is that how you were able to get into it so early? Obviously, if you're three, somebody had to be your manager, or actor, an actor already, or something, right? No, actually, my neither of my parents were um, actively in the industry. I mean, my dad had my mom did like theater in high school. My dad had acted before in certain things, but when my sister and I started, and when we got agents, um, she was six and I was three, and my parents were doing other jobs. Um, we were just, Bella is my sister. Her name's Bella. We went to a children's theater camp and some of the parents there went up to our parents and asked if we had agents. And they're like, I think your girls would really like that to continue, not just on the theater stage, but, you know, go into auditions. So they were like, sure, let's, you know, we'll talk to them and see if they even want to do it. Um, and, I remember my sister and I were like, oh, my God, that's something we could do. Like We can be in the TV like that. Um, and I was three. So I, I didn't really know that it was obtainable for myself. Um, so I just kind of followed my sister into it. 
because also I've always looked up to her. I wanted to do everything she's doing. Um, but That's so fun. So thank God for theater <laughs> camp though. Cause my, uh, my daughter's like in theater too. And she's like all about it, but it's all, it all starts with theater. That's pretty much. And so, yeah, I want to get into that with Chelsea. So you're, first of all, first question is like how you, you said you had a casting director, but how you found the actors for the film and how you guys figured out who was, was the right person to do what, and then how you got into this from, I know you said you got into this from being um, an improv comedy theater person, but then, but that's a pretty, can still be a slightly big jump. So how did that happen? That's my second question. Sure. Yeah. So Michael Donovan and Richie Ferris um, helped us cast this movie. And I was so grateful that they were willing to come on board. Our dear friend Austin introduced us to them and, you know, indie budget. So, you know, and they were willing to put in the work and I was, I was kind of a hard ass about casting and wanted to make sure I found the right team. And, um, and with the, basically, yeah, we put it out there and we got a lot of incredible submissions and I really wanted to audition like the Stewart family kids in person, everyone else I was willing to do, you know, virtually. Um, but I wanted to see the kids together. I wanted to interact with them, um, in person um, and yeah, I, it was important to see everybody's improv skills and see their comfortability doing that. So that was a big, like, I, I would give them like a kind of like a paragraph description of the scene and one of us would improvise with them. Um, and then for Eliza Sufi and, um, the Harper role. So, oh, so basically the Tiffany, Amy and Harper role, um, were kind of like offer only characters like the people who are submitting and I did a really s <laughs> silly thing with um where I was really overwhelmed by the the submissions that we got and you know I got really a, a bunch of talented people and because it was offer only I was like how do I know who's right for this and I'm a spiritual person so I ended up um putting their names into a hat <laughs> like <laughs> everyone and you got you did their birth charts and you had an astrology <laughs> reading and you made sure everybody was compatible yeah exactly. I'm, I'm totally I literally, yeah like I prayed about it and then I picked names out of a hat and I did it a couple times and the same names kept coming up no matter how much I mixed the bowl Oh, I love that. I, that is yeah. so great. Yeah. No, the angels, I totally am spiritual too. And the guides that come through through creative things, I couldn't I couldn't function without it because that's what it is. You could how could you possibly know? Like you have I to have know. a little yeah. extra help yeah, from yeah. the higher forces. And like come on. Definitely. Uh Eliza's name came up and I was like, I didn't wasn't super familiar with her work. And I started researching her and I was like, oh this is the person. And we got on our first call. And she's well and known though. She's in a lot of Yeah, she's films. in a bunch of stuff. And I just What she, is she yeah, in? Because she looks so familiar to me. A lot um, of okay. Yeah. She was in um Happy Endings. She was in Future Man. She was in Reboot. She was she's I mean, she just she's, she works a lot, clearly. Her face. Yeah, yeah, you see her, yeah. Um, and she's so talented. I mean, my whole cast, I'm like just blew me away. Um, but yeah, we got on our first call and I like told her straight up, I was like, I pulled your name out of a hat and she was like, I'm in, she was like, so into it <laughs> and we just hit it off and, um, and same thing with Sufi. She was just super sweet. And then with Harper, we ended up having to kind of like pivot at the last moment and there were like stuff happened and I ended up having to like jump in to play Harper, which I wasn't expecting. Um, so that happened like. Wow. Yeah. That is yeah, un right yeah, unprecedented. Usually that does not, ha I mean, I don't know <laughs> if I've ever heard of that where you're not, you're, you're the director, you're the writer, you are not going to act. Thank God you had acting skills or at least yeah. To the degree, but you, I mean, you just, you were excellent. And did you know, I mean, my God, through the whole thing, were you super nervous or I did you just, and how did you direct and act at the same time being that you weren't really prepared for that? Yeah, good questions. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without the support of Ava and Eliza and Sufi. Mm -hmm. Like when I told them that we had to pivot, they were so supportive and I 
don't know what I would have done if they weren't supportive, because I think that would have gotten in my head and I would have doubted myself. And all three of them were like, this is the right thing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, like, you know, like trying to convince myself, like, okay, this is, <laughs> and I'm a big believer that like everything happens for a reason. Um, but I just went into survival mode and was I that really- character from your perspective though? Cause it was like a, com- I know you're a commercial, it right? Was, it was just like yeah. you, you're kind of playing yourself. Yeah. It's so a that, version of me for that sure. helped. Yeah. 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 I can see that. Yeah. And it, because of the improv aspect of the film, it really allowed me to like be an inside agent and like steer the ship from within the movie, which was interesting. Like, whereas before I would have had to like cut and give feedback, but because I was now in scenes, I was able to like, if I feel like we missed a beat, I was able to reel the scene back. Or if, if I felt like we were going off track, I was able to bring us back in. Or, you know, if I, there was an emotional moment that I feel like we didn't hit, I was able to kind of like keep pushing. So it really allowed me to like direct from within the scene, which I think was surprisingly helpful. <laughs> um, that but- is so interesting. Yeah. I mean, so let's get into, I just want to read your director's quote because, yeah. I mean, your director's, uh, where is that? Your <clears throat> director's statement. No right way is loosely based on a personal experience and it's taken me a long time to build the confidence to tell a story that's truly authentic that honors my mistakes and acknowledges my wounds i've written two other feature screenplays one jukebox musical stage play script and two pilot scripts with full series outlines but never have i been so vulnerable and as if being vulnerable on the state on the page wasn't enough, the universe wanted me to push further out of my comfort zone <clears throat> and onto the screen due to some unforeseen circumstances with our lead actress. You're just talking about that. So yes, I wrote, directed, acted, and edited the damn thing. You wrote, and I mean, you literally. How come you couldn't find an editor? I mean, how could you do all of this? <laughs> no, the editing is definitely me feeling. Well, a I think. We definitely wanted, I wanted somebody to do the first cut, but it just came down to we didn't have the money. Right, of course. And I think it's also a control thing. Like, Well, like, the editing is ultimately the ultimate. I mean, it's the ultimate. You can actually make something really shitty, like really good through editing. You make something, you know, the other way around. So, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the editing, as, as torturous as it is, it's also part of it's my favorite part. And, uh. And yeah, I, especially because the improv nature, it was, I think it was really important for me to edit this. Like how many everything. takes, like when you were doing, you know, you know how you can have like the 20 different takes and then pick each take when you're editing. How many takes did you have? I mean, how many did you do for each scene that you would pick from? Just curious. Yeah. I mean, we would go, um, we would do the scene like maybe twice getting twice. like, cause we were shooting, t- um, Two cameras. Right. So we did, like, we'd probably do the scene like twice of like close ups on us and then like twice like more like wide. So mm-hmm. we usually have at least four takes, sometimes more, sometimes less. I mean, there are some scenes where I only had one take from a certain angle and I was like kicking myself in the editing room. And there are other times where we, you know, kept playing and like trying to figure it out. But because the takes are so long, they're like 10 minutes to 15 minute long takes, you know, like. I didn't want to do more than, you know, you do two of those and you, you know, you're just burnt. Long. You're burnt. And you're also like <laughs> losing the energy of everybody. Like, but to do four takes on one scene, that's, that's a lot. But I mean, you're saying yeah. that you would do no more than four, but most of them were like one or two. Um, well, you, we, we at least did it like three. Yeah. It, like depending on the, the hard part is, is like the angles, you know, yeah. Like, we would, yeah, there are a continuity. A yeah. Yeah. The continuity <laughs> thing. Ava, are you going to say something? Um, no, I, I just, yeah, I remember thinking in my head, like, there there was always two different things going on inside of my brain, which was, I need to just, you know, not overanalyze my performance in the, I need to be in the moment. I want to be as present as possible and just live in the Georgie character and, you know, forget Ava, forget my life just live in hers. And then at the same time, I was like, okay, was my cup here or was it over here? And like, were my glasses on my head? Were they off my head? Is it like, you know, um, 
So we, I mean, I think I could say the same for Chelsea too, I guess. It's that thing of you have all these different compartments in your brain that are focusing on on different things all at the same time, um, which was fun though, because I figured out how to navigate that and handle that. Um, yeah, it's like I say that they say that we have like the 12 strands of DNA, but when you're doing something like this, especially if you're acting, directing, and my, I mean, everything, you're using 12 strands at the same time. Like, and then when you're acting, I feel like you have to be something's got to get lit up more because it is all those things. Like there's so many different things and you're being challenged, but human beings, that's one of the things we do great. We might not be great at a lot of things, but we are really good at making movies. Like, and you know, so you guys did a great job with this film. You're going to say something. Yeah. I was just going to say, I also have to like call out my younger sister who was my actual younger sister who was on set the entire time. She was a huge help. Um, and her willingness to like work with Ava and just get really personal about her life and share like, you know, I think that and her support also when it came down to me acting, she was all she was like, do it, Chels. She was like in. And then also the rest of my team and my crew, like Pete Soto, who's my DP. He was the one who was actually like, Chelsea, I think you should just act in it. And I was like, what? <laughs> so, wow. Um, so I mean, it sounds like you just had a magical group of people coming together yeah. to make it happen because, you know, the subject matter of single motherhood is, I mean, literally, I know five single moms. I mean, it's, and there really isn't like a whole lot about single motherhood. So I feel like the the time, as you said, this is something in your director's statement, it's like, this is the time for something like this to sort of come out. I think it was very like apropos to, the the times and just not having a whole lot of that content out there for some reason or films about that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I know sh there, I have another concept around single moms that um, Sean and I've talked to my husband about, and he's really excited about. So maybe that will be another thing in the future. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I'm so happy that people are really resonating with it. And I just wanted to real quick get into, cause we do have to wrap this up, but I wanted to get into your crowdfunding. So tell us about sort of where you're at in that because you know we usually ask how in the hell you put this film together I mean how did you yeah you know good question monetarily I mean you know <laughs> we were hoping to find like you know some heavy hitting investors and we we had some family throw down some money which helped this thing get off the ground but we ended up putting a lot of stuff on credit cards and taking out a big loan and so we you know even though it's done we're still paying paying it off <laughs> And so we are crowdfunding for quote unquote finishing funds, but it's really just to pay off the money that we've spent that is just incurring, incur, incurring a lot of um, interest. Interest. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So tell us like where yeah. and how we can contribute to this film because it's a yeah. it's fantastic film. Thank you. We're on GoFundMe, um, No Right Way. We have a website, NoRightWayMovie.com. And, you know, you can find it on our Paxeros website as well. And our social media is No Right Way Movie um, on Instagram. And when you donate, um, I will do, you get to pick a song and I will do a dance of gratitude. So it's a really funny. I, like, that's what I've been seeing on Instagram. I'm like, wait, what is this? Oh, that's so cute. I love that. Yeah. So when people <laughs> donate, they get to pick a song that brings them joy. And I will dance my heart out to the entire song. Whether they want to see the whole song or not, I'll do it. <laughs> it's so cute. I love that. That's great. Well, I just want to say thanks again, guys, for being on the podcast. We are on Spotify, so please share. We're on YouTube, and we are also an Apple podcast where most people um, listen to us. So share the podcast. And once again, thanks we could have gone on for hours and hours. I wish I didn't have to cut it short. Yeah, but. thank you for also putting on this podcast. I think it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. You know, it's the little, the little I could do. I wish we could get, like you said, some funding so we could have some, like, you know, two camera shots and like some cool stuff like that just for no reason you know but um you know here we are and best of luck in all of your work and uh yeah that's it for this episode of let's talk film podcast and we'll see you next time bye thank you thank